Today's tutorial is going to show how to create labels uh, from addresses that you have in a spreadsheet, either an Excel spreadsheet or an OpenOffice spreadsheet. I've got a file here with a couple of different address lists. This one is in Excel. Here's one that's in OpenOffice, but let's use Excel as our example. From the OpenOffice screen, our first job is to register our data. So we're basically going to create a new database from that Excel spreadsheet. So click Database. And I want to connect to an existing database and pick the type Spreadsheet. Go to Next. Browse to the file that I want to use, and it's this Excel addresses file. Click Open. I can password protect it if I want, but I'm not going to. Click Next. You can edit it if you want, but that's not necessary, so I'm just going to say yes, register the database for me, and click Finish. Now I've got a couple different databases from different exercises, but I'm going to call this one Excel Label Database, just so we know which one we're using, and hit Save. Now, to go ahead and create the sheet of labels, I'm going to go to File, New, and pick Labels. Now the first tab here, and I've done this before in this machine, so I've got some data in here. I'm going to clear it out, just get a nice blank sheet, which is what you'll probably find. And the database I'm going to choose is the one we just created called Excel Label Database. It's the one we just created, so I'll pull it down from my options. Because it's an Excel spreadsheet, the data is on Sheet 1. Had I renamed it, that would show up here, but I just left it as Sheet 1. Now if I go down here in the fields, I see all the different fields that were in my database. And we're going to move these over to create the labels. So I'm going to pick the student's name, move it to the left, put a space to separate it from the last name, move that to the left, hit a return, put in the address, move it to the left, hit another return, put in the city, move it, add my comma and my space, put in my state abbreviation, move that over, put in two spaces because that's the way I learned it, put in the zip code, move it to the left. And now I have the address. Now here the format section is for the different types of labels. Some people who print a lot of labels might be on a continuous spool, but I'm printing an 8.5 by 11 sheet. The brand is Avery, and the address label type will pick this 2.5 by 1, which is 3 on a row, 10 rows on the sheet. Now there's another very important thing you need to do for your labels, and it's not on this first sheet, this first tab, excuse me. It's on the Options tab, and it's Synchronize Contents. You want to make sure that there is a check mark in Synchronize Contents, and I'll show you why that's so important in the very next step. We're going to create our new document. This is going to be our sheet of labels. Okay, I'll make my view a little bit smaller so you can see all the different labels on the sheet. Three rows across, ten rows down. Or three labels across, ten rows down. Here's this little synchronized label uh, menu that's there, and I'll show you what that's for. If you want to change the way it looks, let's say you don't want this to be Times New Roman in size 12. We're going to highlight the f upper left label. We're going to change the font to something else. We'll pick this Viner Hand. Because it is a bigger font, we're going to have to pick a different size. See, so now that first one is in a different format. If I hit Synchronize Labels, all of the labels change. So that makes it very easy to change the color or change the font to your labels. Now to see how it would look, I'm going to go up to File, down to Print, and you get the message that your document contains address database fields. Do you want to print a form letter? Don't let the wording fool you. We're going to click yes, even though it's labels, not a letter. It's tying in with a mail merge. And here it pulls up the mail merge screen with the different names and addresses from the spreadsheet. I'm going to print all of the labels. I'm going to print to a file so you can see what it looks like instead of printing to a printer and I'm going to click OK. They ask me to save this. I'm going to call it Output 
for labels and it's going to be in my documents folder. Little print monitor just shows that it was printing. Now if I go to my documents folder I should find the output for labels. Now this is pretty important. Even though you've saved it and you'd think it'd be one file, you can actually view it two ways. When I go to open it, I get a little message that asks me, let me minimize this so you can see it, the little message says update all links. I'm going to click no because I want all the labels, one for each person, Peter Johnson, Kathy Dieseldorf, Sally Myers, that a little bit wider so you can see. Peter Johnson, Kathy Dieseldorf, Sally Myers, Harvey Assisi, and on. So then you could just print these labels. I'm going to close this now and show you the other option, if minimize this, if I had opened from my documents folder the output for labels, but this time clicked Yes, update all links, watch what happens. I get a whole sheet of Peter Johnson. Three across, ten down, thirty labels for Peter Johnson. If that's what you want to do, then you click Yes to update all links. I'm going to discard this and open it the other way because that was really our intent. Open the output for labels, click No, let's not update the links, and I get one label for every person. So now you know how to do it both ways, either a whole sheet of one or every record on the sheet. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me at skunzi at colgate.edu.